So this is Michi Hoya from Avid Chronic Racing and we're going to round this day up together with some GG3 racing of a Mercedes AMG around a well-known Suzuka from Japan and with me again is my mate Robert here. So hello Robert. Hello, hello Robert. Thank you for joining me in here and uh, we're gonna give you a very new format <coughs> of setup guiding here so it's not only being me. Um, Talking on the channel and talking on the stream, um, so I'm trying to focus a bit more on driving to really unleash the setup performances, being um, able to pull out from the car. Whereas Robert, um, gonna share some tiny bit of knowledge he has on the um, <coughs> on the setup building side. So uh, there's some interesting stuff to come up as we are. Uh, going to have a go in uh, Dry Suzuka and I want to see eh, do not really have a preset of uh, real road here so um, I'm gonna quickly put in some massive amount of real road um, things aren't you going to use the Matsusaka? where is the Matsusaka there? Is there a... Uh, oh, wait. Because uh, I don't know if it's... Yeah, there it is. Suzuka. There yeah. it is. Uh, it's the Grand Prix circuit, right? Um, yeah. Oh, hold, hold on a second, guys. I need to fix something. Uh, derpy derp. Yep. So uh, there we are, Matsusaka Grand Prix circuit. Um, Hello, Martin Stefanko. What's up? Having a good time? So we can keep that static and we want to have it fully sunny. There we go. So we just need to pick up the right car and we're gonna take um, the Mercedes AMG 1.0. Um, there you go. So hey Martin, thanks for joining us here on the show. Uh, it's gonna be some kind of different things going on. So we're not going to raise uh, a formula car here on R Factor 2. We're gonna do again some bit of driving in a Mercedes AMG GT3 um, around famous Suzuka circuit. As I'm just waiting for stuff to load, I'm gonna be particularly interested in the new HUD, how that works with the GT3. Um, so for, for those people watching it uh, the first time right now, um, SHQM on the dash um, HUD, that's a pretty useful tool here for, uh, on the R Factor 2 workshop and it actually replaces the uh, well-known track map plugin. Um, so if you guys are looking for some things or for some uh, replacement of that, uh, definitely go for it. And the first question from me towards Robert would be ABS and traction control low, yes or no? <laughs> Down to your preference, actually. You can even go higher than that because <clears throat> because having it on high and medium, for example, for ABS and traction control respectively, is not actually inaccurate for a real car to be on actually i see well I, I i use it mainly for um just having some confidence on it and i think i mean <laughs> we're racing we're racing endurance cars so an endurance car usually has abs and traction control it's high yeah yeah usually on a dry uh, track when it's really well, uh, well rubbered in 
uh, they use quite low, it's not the lowest setting, but it's quite low from what I heard from actual drivers. They told, uh, they said that the, uh, they don't run really uh, too high on traction, traction control, but on ABS it's usually very high. So I just take out the uh, the standard setup on uh, soft tires, and uh, I've, I've no nothing changed to it yet, rather than brake bias and uh, traction control and ABS. Other than that, this is the stock setup, and this GT3 car is really a beast that likes to spin on me. So, when being used on ever so understeery uh, eye racing, and you then come towards R Factor 2 again, whoop. this is quite some different and thing. This car really likes fail and braking. If you fail brake uh, right uh, to the apex, it rewards you with great stability. Oh, it doesn't. Or it's uh, me having a wrong brake bias being set. Um, around 55. Yeah, but that thing should be enough. It looks actually all right. So 130 is that gonna be flat out? Yes and no. And uh, no. Uh, actually, if with great amount of rubber and. Uh, uh, low fuel, if you nail it, you should be close to flat out, but actually flat out? No, not really. So, uh, we're just trying to set our first lap time reference. Um, so, the. Um, on me I <laughs> still think uh, I should call you DK and that's not nah, no 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 yeah, yeah I, know, I know it's drifting it's drifting <laughs> um, um, first things first things first uh, show me what's the default uh, value for a uh, wing level because that's really important in that car uh, there you go. That's rear wing eight. Um, go for ten. Just for the beginning, it it just needs to be a bit more stable at the beginning, and then when once we uh, get the mechanical platform a bit right, we can go a bit lower than this. <clears throat> but. Just don't don't really go for the limit, just try to set a clean lap that we can go from there. So you don't need really need to set the uh, world on fire. Yeah, sure. So currently looking at suspension and stuff, anything to change there or just go out with a higher <laughs> rear wing? <laughs> not yet, not yet. Alright. That's just uh we should really start from default because that's actually where everyone is starting from. So I believe uh, changing straight away from default before even, even uh, posting a lap on default is uh, I don't think it's a wise thing to do. Hold on a second. What's that squeaky noise? Yeah. Oh, there's some weird alarm going off on this weather station and it does that for no reason because it does that for ages and I'm really <coughs> all that <laughs> stuff. For a moment I thought it was your cat because you already told me that she does yeah, I was, I was noises than usual cat. No no no. But uh for the for the first time I thought it was the cat doing some stuff in the room, but then I <laughs> 
Uh, I thought a cat cannot be here because it's outside of the house. Um, anyway, I'm trying to focus a bit more on driving now. Exactly. See guys, learning through fun only on Michi Hoyer's stream. So Robert, I think there's some interesting input for discussion. Yeah. On the chat there. Oh, Mr. Clean. Oh, uh, iRacing feels kind of easier to me than Af. Af. I believe that's mostly because you might have started with iRacing and then tried Factor 2 because that's always the case for uh, anyone who starts with one sim and then hops to another sim he always uh, finds out that the uh, original sim that he started with uh, is easier from, uh, for him so I really believe it might be due to you being uh, used to uh, iRacing and not to R Factor 2 because for me R Factor 2 is the easiest uh, out of all of them because I'm used to it even though it's considered one of the most challenging uh, things on the market definitely the most sophisticated and technological uh, te technological advanced thing on the market I don't know if Michi agrees with me but I do uh, I have to be honest, I'm a, I'm a pure R factor, R factor guy, and uh, yes, I do enjoy I racing for that bit of competition and casual racing. You can simply hop in and do some racing, um, but I think it calls itself being the real simulation, and I kindly disagree with that title. Eduardo, uh, yeah, I've seen this discussion and. Um, what you are trying to do there is to not exactly what you would do with a real car for one reason. If you do this in a real car without any uh, system uh, taking over uh, from the start, like large control or something like this, you would break the car. So we can't, you can't really compare uh, this uh, behavior to real car because real car don't do uh, like this they don't rev to the max uh, and just from the neutral they just engage first gear without any uh, electronic uh, electronical aids or programs they just don't because it really can break a car apart easily the lap was a two zero two you can see you can do three, that because, because mm, if there isn't um, a simulation for uh, for clutch braking, it's have at it. You can do it all day long, and it won't uh, break the car. In real life, you just don't do it because you can't really afford buying new clutch uh, like every day. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that uh, slide is uh, both uh, from the setup and from your inputs. I really discovered that this car, if you, as soon as you get off uh, brake pedal in the uh, mid corner, if you... Ah! <laughs> okay, what's on? I'm a little behind you on the screen. Yeah, I know. I was just waiting for the car to straight out for the for the track again. <laughs> Simply didn't oh. stop turning. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I think what you really have to learn on that car is stay on the brakes. Yes, you really need to. S Once you uh, hit the brakes, you just need to stay on the brakes until you are one hundred percent sure it. It won't be uh, the 
it, it, that it will be the last time you uh, touch them in a collar. You basically need to prolong the breaking uh, phase uh, to the point as uh, when you get off the brake pedal, you are automatically immediately on throttle. There is no um, big gap between this. If there is, there can be a small one, but if there is a big one, that that means that something went, went, went wrong. Haha, <laughs> Mr. Clean called you the same thing. Haha. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Would be actually nice to be that. Yeah, you wouldn't. You could see how many girls he had just fall uh, from the sake of being decayed. Oh! Uh, I wouldn't really uh, moan about this if I had this. Let me do some further testing. True. Just of stuff, uh, because really this. See, 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 this one, f uh, this f first corner, this was purely uh, you not being on the brakes uh, long enough. Yeah, and but I, I, I kept quite long on the brakes. Helps. And high anti lock brakes actually helps, so you can try that. Yeah, that's why I put it on then. <laughs> yeah, that's actually what I saw just now. I think it's also down to the tie. I think the softer the tie is, the more the car balance is shifted towards the front. Although that makes no sense whatsoever. But I was mm. doing, I was doing a few setup guides. But I was doing the test on the SM, on the S9M rather than the S7 or S6M. Yeah. And the car did not felt as twitchy as it is now. There might be different reasons for that. Uh, I don't think that the construction is different on uh, each of them. Each of them. Uh, that could be purely uh, coming from uh, the S9 being <coughs> more resistant to temperature changes. So when you actually slide this car a bit, which you shouldn't, the S9 just reacts a bit easier on the car once you slide it a bit then S7 which after a few slides gets really twitchy so that might be the case but construction wise see already the rear the rear tires are yellow on the rear end with 80% yeah well the rear left one because I slided it like four times really really huge it's a shame that we couldn't get the rear up. Uh, it would be a good way to uh, compare uh, what we are doing differently and show people what's uh, the idea, what's the worst idea, and etc. Yeah, that's the really real end. To work on on this on the, for the next occasion. Uh, we really need to work on the rear end for now. Yeah. Uh, that is horrendous. Problem is, problem is that default setting for almost every GT3 car in the pack uh, is too high. Rear camber. Basically because the new tire model which is present in this uh, in these cars is uh, quite revol revolutionary because camber gain is actually a thing with uh, these cars. With previous cars there was some camber gain, but it was nothing nearly as much as it is now. So right now uh, it is so much more essential for you to actually nail uh, the cambers on, on the new cars, uh, because if you do, you benefit greatly from uh, stability and grip, uh, and grip that you uh, get from uh, better set up uh, cambers. I'm utterly sorry, but I have to swap some things. And I think uh, Robert is better to understand now. So, um, where would you would like to start working on the car? Um, first of all, uh, like I said, default cambers on uh, GT3 cars are too high actually on the front end 
So you can maybe not halve it, but just go quite a lot lower um, on the rear camber. On the rear camber, okay. Yeah. Oops. Four. So two. Or is that too let's low? Let's try that. Let's try that. Okay. <laughs> I'm I, I'm gonna tell you that it's no, never a bit too low. I, I will explain it to you maybe a bit later why, but right now just try two, and to see if that's an improvement. Also, uh, it's a good idea to shift your a brake bias more towards front front end because from my experience I know that uh, everything uh, below 55 uh, in a dry uh, on a dry track is on a limit it's maybe not too low but on a limit so it's really easier to control a car with uh, brake bias above 55 at least with AMG I see so uh, Eduardo, I've turned down the R Factor 2 volume, so uh, Robert's gonna be a lot louder on your end. Um, is that all right to you now? So I hope you guys can uh, hear him better. So that's great. <clears throat> yeah, sometimes this uh, voluming stuff is a bit weird. Okay, and while you drive around and try to set up a lap, I'm gonna uh, explain uh, what actually camber gain is and uh, why this is such a big change in R Factor 2 for, uh, right now. Basically, camber gain is as the name suggests, a gain in camber that you get uh, dynamically uh, from a car rolling around, which either if it's uh, in straight, because you can have camber gain even when you are standing still on the road, because you are applying um, where static set uh, cambers, you are applying forces, which is the weight of the car uh, on the wheels, which doesn't stay for example, if you set the camber to 2, it is not 2 when you put it on the ground. And if and it's definitely not 2 when you are uh, uh, cornering. It could be even minus 4 on one end. The camber gain is really huge uh, on the new cars, which is uh, much more correct than the previous uh, Mm, tires that we had in R-Factor 2, which were, which were already really, really, really uh, good, but uh, they are really approaching to uh, almost space engineering with tires. Um, basically, what you want to do is to have uh, cambers set to a, a point when you are using the most of the tire in the corners. But of course, you are not using the same amount of rubber uh, on uh, each tire at every corner. Basically, you have to decide in which corners you want to have the best possible uh, grip, which comes from largest contact patch available. Um, you want to do this by... Uh, this is actually the uh, the hard part because it requires a lot of motor work because uh, you can tell it by feel how to do this but it takes uh, a long much longer time and it's quite a bit harder to, to achieve so uh, working with motor is really really almost essential to get to get uh, proper cambers uh, for your car and once you do and you have your cambers set in a way for uh, most of the corners that you want to have maximum grip uh, you want the tire to be it's called rollover of the tire basically what it means when the car is cornering it, the forces are, uh, are higher on one end than the other basically the car is leaning uh, on, the, on the tire for which uh, 
mm, is on the outside of the cola. And therefore, uh, it's um, creating a low rollover uh, on the tire, which changes the shape of the tire. And what you want is for you, for your camber to be at the spot w uh, which, when you are in a corner, the rollover is big enough or small enough, depend on, depends on what you actually need uh, uh, from a tire at this moment. The, so that you get maximum possible contact with uh, with the road, which creates uh, best grip. That's exactly what you are trying to to do. <coughs> so, after some more information on about camber and uh, real camber and how the physics gonna evolve, really, um, I would like to the car a little bit more pointy at the front end so shifting the balance towards the front since now it doesn't feel very under understeery but it feels like it could be a lot more oversteery you know what i mean on a on a front end when you are entering a corner or when you are in in a corner already uh, i think when i'm in the corner already and on throttle okay that's Okay, let, let's go to uh, suspension. There you go. <clears throat> Give me a moment. Yep. Because I don't see it. I know. Yet. Uh, I'm my... gonna refresh the Twitch, so yeah. I'm gonna. Oh, yeah, that's so. Uh, I like it. My... Yeah, uh, what you want is uh, lower the uh, slow rebound at the front yes let's go with two clicks at the beginning okay that's it <laughs> like i said when you are doing, yeah uh, i know setup you should really <laughs> do focus it on one change at a time but you already should feel the difference what um, does this uh, slow rebound do after you answer the question of michael uh, yeah, on a chamber, you mean camber, don't you? Um, I assume that is, you mean camber. Uh, do you decrease the amount for the corner? Uh, well, uh, problem is that this is dynamic, so you can't really predict uh, um, how the tire will behave uh, in a corner because it's really changing. Um, like a hundred times in a second where when you are in the, a corner and it goes up down up down like crazy so um, you don't you, you can't even keep up with the changes with your eyes when you are uh, watch, uh, looking at it at the data uh, run in real time basically it's impossible so what sh what you want to do is let let me explain this this way. Everything is connected. It's not like uh, you change camber to this or that, and that is all that can be done about camber gain, because camber gain can come from uh, different uh, positions, like uh, different uh, anti-roll bars, uh, stiffness of spring rates. Everything is connected, basically. Uh, what, everything that you do to a car, um, is affecting the uh, tires and how the tires react uh, in corners dynamically. So it's not an easy answer, and there is no one answer for for this uh, to give you. It's more of a it's general rule of thumb. It's not like uh, give it 1.8 if you want to. Uh, this amount of grip in this corner because if you don't have uh, this RLB or your right height is uh, uh, not this or amount of that, you just it wouldn't work. I can already see the car being much better. Yep, 
but what's the what does the slow rebound actually do there? <coughs> <laughs> uh, what it does, uh, basically, what I did was enabling uh, the spring to decompress a bit more freely. Um, so basically, what what you're getting is spring rate. Uh, I mean, spring which as it releases the, uh, the force uh, which is uh, inside of the off compressed uh, spring is decompressed much faster giving giving you much faster response of a suspension to to um, turning well, once you are in the corner and already on uh, on throttle you are starting to decompress your front suspension, your, your front uh, spring, and therefore I, I just made it a bit faster for you to decompress, so yeah. I see. So yeah, evening to you as well Twiggy, thanks for joining me, and yes Xavier, that's the actual new HUD I was talking about yesterday already. Um, there's four different layouts, I think this is layout variant uh, number A. Um, if you want to have a look at it, go to the R Factor 2 webshop on Steam and look for SHQM HUD. Then you're gonna find it. As so I'm looking to do it faster around this circuit than I did before, finally. And Mitri, I strongly advise you to use brake pedal in the SS uh, as a way to balance the car a bit better for it to be hooked more around apexes. Okay. Just for your information, anything below 44 in first sector is a good time. What did I do first sector? I haven't seen it. 46. Uh, <laughs> 46 something. I'm two and a half seconds off. GG. <laughs> uh, but remember that you, you set the rubber to medium or high? Medium that is. Oh, okay. With high uh, you would gain maybe six, seven times. That's from the rubber. I believe I see. that's the gaps between um, each rubber preset, I believe. On each sector, of course, I'm, I'm talking. Yeah. At least on this track, because this track really benefits from having much more uh, rubber. More than any other track that I know of, actually. Uh, and uh, in 130R, it's really better to keep it in fifth. Fifth. Just yeah. I never go to fourth there, ah, even okay. with full tank. But the approach for turn one is actually very good for you. So. Oh, I really feel the tires to go off after the first lap, really. Yeah, because you burned them quite a lot in the S's. That's why I told you to use brakes in the S's. Um, because it prevents you from overstressing the tire, which is really essential with the new tires that we have in our factor 2, to keep them uh, as much away from overstressing as as possible because once you overstress them, yeah, they are just falling uh, falling off like crazy. But do you, do you think that this change that we did to rebound uh, actually helped you? Was it the desired uh, result for you? It made cornering a lot better, and looking at the delta, I could have gone faster. Like at least if really good. looking at the sector times, I think the first the first sector was 
Yeah, 45.2. So there you go. Which, um, which part of the uh, car is right now most mostly bothering you the most? I still believe that it's the rear end that's a little bit too to lose. That could be a bit too stiffer, uh, a bit huh. more stable, yeah. Oh, I mean, okay. I mean, the initial churning is like getting a little bit of swing or a little bit of uh, sideways activity going into the car. Once um, you break and enter the corner, yeah? Yeah. That's when you feel the car is a bit like uh, driving on a glass, yeah? Um, or just really anxious, like you feel like it's about to break away <clears throat> for you. Yeah, it's about to break away, and if that fe uh, that that slide moment that comes or that oversteering moment that comes is some sort of okay to a certain extent. But once it goes beyond there, it starts the entire car to drift to the outside, and that. Ah, okay. That's actually can be fixed by the slowing down the uh, so-called cocking up of the rear end, uh, which is the motion when you stomp on the brake, the front end goes down, and the rear end just cocks up. So it goes higher, and to prevent it from going uh, uh, up, it's when it's going uh, up too fast. That's mm -hmm. when uh, this uh, really unsettled feeling comes from. So uh, what you and everyone listening to us should do when he feels uh, something like this happening or close to happen, uh, the best way is to increase slow rebound on the rear. What it does basically, it mm, prevents the rear spring uh, from extending too quickly. So it's basically like holding the back end up so it doesn't uh, goes up, so it doesn't go up uh, uh, too 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 quickly uh, up. Two clicks. Mm -hmm. All right. One click could be not enough, so two clicks is always the best way to showcase the change. So, um, as I quickly answer some questions or some messages here, so Twiggy, yeah, I will check my inbox uh, right away next time. Uh, probably even do it tonight, but not racing. And uh, James, I think this. Um, question is probably hinted to both of us um, for me definitely it's R Factor 2 since R Factor 2 is the most advanced and most sophisticated uh, simulator out there and right after that comes iRacing because it's still got some uh, realism inside and uh, it has a good com level of competition and well I think simulation wise that's that's about it what's there on the market. Some guys consider Seto Corsa to still be a sim, but after that last race on the sim racing Malta with a Formula Renault 3.5, I'm not even too sure whether this is uh, can still be considered a sim. Um, as I would also like you, Michael, to thank you ever again. Because I just saw an email popping up with some certain message of my uh, Streamlabs account. And really massive, massive thank you to the, um, to another donation. I really, I'm speechless. I'm really speechless um, of that support. And I never thought to, to be supported that kindly and warm hearted than I am from, from you. You, um, especially, but uh, everyone else as, as well. Of course, you, you all guys are great addition to that show, great addition to, to that stream. Uh, Robert is on here, ready to answer your questions, since now I'm starting the first flying lab with the new setup settings. Um, if you lower both amber and rebound, 
do you have to increase the spring rate to compensate the lateral forces? Um, it's... I don't know what you are trying um, to accomplish because if that's... Uh, if you want uh, only to change your number gain or anything else or behavior, it's not like you have to change other things to compensate because you already want to change overall behavior so you don't want to compensate for that you actually want to all this change to have an impact so if you compensate for that the, the uh, impact uh, of that change wouldn't be enough or even the same so I don't really see the point of changing all the stuff when you are trying to achieve one thing Somehow the rear end is more twitchy now. At least from my point of view. On braking? No, in general. Hmm, well, it all, it, uh, of course it could affect the overall balance of the car, so therefore maybe some other uh, settings on a car can interfere with that change on a car uh, quite easily, so yeah, that's quite possible, but that's to be expected when you try to fix one thing, there's no way it's, gon it's not gonna affect the other thing. So, but if the braking is a little bit better right now, that's what we were aiming to do. If we accomplished at this, that's what we should be happy about, and anything else should be dealt with afterwards. It was not the braking itself that was worse, it was the initial turn in that swung the car around a bit too much, but uh... Still, still slow rebound at the rear should fix that, because when you are having a twitchy rear end on initial Turning and braking, it's usually rear rebound that could fix it. Of course, not only that, because uh, you can also fix that by having a uh, stiffer uh, front spring, because it basically does the same thing that... Uh, I mean, it doesn't do the same thing, but the result could be the same thing when you use strong, uh, front uh, spring and rear rebound. What it does, the, if the front is stiffer and you press the brake and the car dips down, squats basically from the forces. Uh, if the spring is much harder, then uh, it will squat much slower and, and it wouldn't squat as much. Basically, it prevents the rear end from cocking up. Basically, exactly what the, the rear uh, low rebound does it slows down the motion of going up uh, as uh, the front end squats. The lap was a two, zero, one, point, one, six. And in a minute, I might have a su suggestion for you, Mitri, which is not setup related, but I need to wait one more minute to be sure. Because it might really end up very good for us. If you tell me to stop doing any mistakes, I'm gonna laugh. <laughs> 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 That's actually quite a nice suggestion. Yeah. Uh, I'm currently trying to oh, yeah, help that to are, myself. You are, doing, you are doing really well, so don't really beat yourself up about this too much. You just finished driving in iRacing, so jumping from one thing to another straight away is always 
called. Um, Mitri, are you still uh, up to make an online session with this setup guide? Because I just got a message that we are uh, given a server from Devin. Uh, yep, sure. And so we can me... swap to there? Yeah, exactly. Let me... Quickly gonna park the car then. I just sent you uh, the password, so unless we want someone uh, to troll us uh, on the server, uh, you, you just make sure you don't show uh, the password for this for the server. Mm -hmm. Not sure if I'm gonna be able to do that. Uh, just give it a just try. Make sure OBS um, doesn't show the window. When you are typing, I know. <laughs> That's the worst password I ever saw. All right. It's nostalgic. Yeah. Could be. So that's me going off here and quickly jump into. Holy moly! Was this your coffee? Is your coffee gone? <laughs> Um, never mind then. Let's carry on. <laughs> Hashtag. Like I said, my I really like my life. Everything in my life is a string of success and uh, me being happy. So let's carry on. Uh, what's the server name called? Um, uh, just type in Devin and it should pop in. Devin's mini host. I see. There you go. Yeah, Mr. Clean, I uh, if, if you look to my regular um, setup guides, I always drove like back to the pits. Uh, because in the end, if you go to a race and you have to enter the pits at some point, maybe. So uh, that is the amount of practice you get into getting the perfect driving into the pit lane. So that's why I keep approaching the pit at the end of a stint or at the end of a run um, on purpose. So there we go, we joined that uh, track with the McLaren and probably find totally uh, different um, conditions. It's not only different but McLaren also uses different damper settings so it will be much less uh... Well, less intuitive for many people because they, they use uh, all-in uh, dampers which work in uh, the other way around. So basically when you go higher, you go lower. <laughs> Do I see a saturated real road? I don't know. Oh um, yeah, there it is. So there's the pressure for me to put on a 44 in the first sector then? <laughs> Actually, the first sector with uh, 50 liters, a uh, really good first sector is maybe in around 43.7.8. Okay, let's see what we can do. issues with uh, frame rates. Let me turn off some things in the background. 
Now you actually can see me drive and see whether I go exactly. do a good job All on the, the paddle. and everything, yeah, it's totally true. I'm just gonna post two, three laps as a benchmark so we can actually see how it improves over the time. I so see. With each uh, change that we make. By the so way, we'll um, yes. 130 R, when I, when I put it into fourth, it's faster for me. Well, depends how you do it, because uh, if you uh, release the throttle quite a lot uh, when before you enter uh, that corner, then yeah, going fourth could end up being much faster, but uh, if you mm, do it correctly, Staying in fifth is actually the better way to go okay. to them, at least from my experience. So let's see about f first sector then. But remember, it's not a qualifying session. It's not all, all about being I know. super fast right now. <laughs> but of course, if if you guy. if you name me uh, a fast sector, I want to put it. <laughs> it's all about showing people what should be done with the car if it does this or that. Um, James, I'm not really preparing for a race, but I'm preparing for be prepared when there is a race. <laughs> That's a really good answer. Ah. I like that. As I slide off the spoon corner. And spoon corner is really a pain even in FSR. I off go really, really wide there. Oh yeah, coffee machine right here beside me. That would be great. Would be a great donation for that. Because I always have to go downstairs to me get me too. a cup of coffee. Or rather not go downstairs but fall down downstairs because that was I usually do. Ah. I'm an expert in falling down the stairs. Happily not Whoa. that. I'm lagging like crazy. So first sector has been a 44.8. That's not bad. But I don't know what uh, what mine will be because with this warping that I'm having right now, the time will be. A All bit. right, give it another approach. Um, thank you very much, Buddha. Actually, I'm feeling a lot better right now, so all that sneezing uh, has stopped to a certain extent. Uh, my throat is not as thick anymore, and. Uh, Obviously, the pain's being reduced. So, I'm actually on my way back to a good fitness level. Um, so, welcome you all guys here on the show. I see some new p people popping in. We've currently changed uh, location, so we're now on uh, our private server where my engineer Robert is able to finally see what I'm doing live. And, uh, this enables him not only to spot my mistakes in real time, but also spot on my paddle work. Um, so he definitely will give some more feedback on uh, driving style, rather than just setting up the car. Which is going to be another addition for you guys as well. Um, oh Michael, you can do it. I mean, yeah, this, this, this track is really difficult to be nailed and to... To do a fast lap on it without wrapping it around like I do currently. So I just need to uh, focus to get a little bit rid of the, the skid marks on the ground um, so I can actually put in a quite good lap there. Uh, 
Oh, that was a bit too fast. I'm still looking for the limits for this current real road here. Yeah, this real road should be enough for high 56, low 57. Ha, huh, so I'm doing high 58. Which GG. is a good pace for high maximum fuel, more or less. Okay, let's see how you are doing. Full screen. But your approach to many corners is really correct, so nothing to complain. So every change that we do to a setup uh, right now should actually benefit you because if I saw you see if do yeah it. no 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 first never 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 first is just too low for this car to uh, go around that corner is it because I use first yeah. at the happen. Also, you don't use it because it's too low, too low gearing for that. I just see no point in using that. Okay, what I, from what I've seen, your car... Oh, huh? okay. <laughs> this is some interesting driving right now. Yeah. Okay, you are yeah. doing some mid corner understeer, which I agree can can be fixed. What are your uh, anti roll bar settings right now? Uh, I think it's three and two. You know what? Go higher than this. Click uh, one click for each. Uh, go up one click. For both front end and rear well. end, it by having less roll in the car, therefore you should uh, have a bit. Uh, oh, yes, uh, second. Um, by having less roll, you should have uh, a bit better control over what the tires are doing, and uh, sometimes. Less roll in a corner means better uh, performance in a corner. Not always, but you should minimize your rolling in corners. That's why uh, all uh, cars, when you, you know, even road cars, when they have adjustable dampers uh, inside, when you change from comfort to sport, let's say, they always stop from rolling around because the more you roll, the less, uh, let's say, the less um, way to actually deal with the car you have mid corner. I still want to use first gear on that hairpin. You are allowed, I'm just saying uh, that it's not the best way. Well, let's see, I'm totally gonna, gonna try it because for me the second gear is too much torque when stamping on it. 
on that. <laughs> you never stamp on the. Yeah, I mean when I, when I'm when I'm going on it. <laughs> yeah. It's totally all right for the chicane, though. <laughs> like I said, it's all done to you. Uh, I'm be right back. I just have to. few things because I'm really getting uh, problems with run rate which is unusual because I'm usually having really good frame rate but yeah uh, with your car uh, feeling right now like what what's your feedback that you're gonna give me um, from the car. It has a little bit too much rotation on the initial turn into me. Like the car mm -hmm. immediately wants to slide and spin, which is currently faster, but I won't be able to do that consistently during a race. Then go up on front compression or bump. Okay, let me just finish that lap because I'm uh, purple. So, uh, as you can see, the ARBs quite improved performance. Yeah. <coughs> Which is really what I was aiming for. Yeah, bit too impatient there. Wow, rally style at around final chicane. Uh, but I'm crossing at the 157.9. So a little bit of progress being done. So you wanted me to increase the slope bump at the front, right? Yes, if you are having some Two clicks. problems with, that's fine with me. I'm coming back on the road. Lol, look at the really sector hoping. one time. Now you're gonna laugh. Is it below 44? No, 44.444. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Uh, uh, maybe the fastest possible, but still, actually, you are closing in on a um, really good time in first sector. Let's see if my problems disappeared. Because I would love to drive a lap without issues. Um, so Alex, there is uh, there's gonna be something interesting because currently in the background I am working on a written setup guide. Um, there's some setup guide already out there. This is the Avid Chronic Racing setup guide version 1 um, that's uh, I think close to two years old and it's written mainly by David O'Reilly with some uh, contribution of myself and it was uh, also um, presented on the Simpit two years ago so if you want to have a look what it is about uh, go on the Simpit and type in R Factor 2 Advanced Setup Guide however we currently have a full rewrite of that and um, gonna proudly present you during the year 2008 the version 2 of it which is much more general um, also dealing about dumpers and everything and um, that is going to be published at some point on the Avid Chronic Racing website 
So, um, follow me, follow ACR, um, follow the Simpit, who's definitely gonna uh, have a glance at it, I'm sure. And uh, maybe you can get on with that book and have some more knowledge being uh, brought to you then. Thought it would be great if we can, could help you at that point. Ah! As I just ran a little bit but too once wide. Once you read it, don't stop coming here because we want, we really want to have some audience. So we don't actually speak to each other only. <laughs> Just keep on visiting us. We exactly. Really would love to Oops. have you here. Whoa! I'm it's... really getting so much warping. I'm basically like three seconds behind what's going on physically because I don't oh, know. Oh, that is some weird stuff. That is some weird stuff. Maybe our factor 2 has changed something to its uh, code or anything. For Maybe some... because I've been on this server many many times and it's never been a problem and now... Maybe it's also a problem on Devin's side, you never know. But I would have had Maybe. the issue then. Um, yeah guys, uh, really I appreciate you looking forward to that. Um, As I said, it's gonna have a rewrite currently, it has over 60 or 70 pages in the end, and it's not only about setting up a car. Uh, I had a full section added to it about uh, personal abilities, like doing some, some mental practices, uh, doing some physical practices, which also sounds weird, but being physically strength also contributes to your concentration and to your... To your um, capabilities of not cracking under pressure. Yeah, um, totally. So uh, there's some some uh, paragraph written about that in there as well. So this setup guide's gonna be um, not only about how to set up a specific car or how to race um, around a certain track. Uh, it also covers a little bit of uh, strategy knowledge, uh, a little bit of MoTeC knowledge. Um, so basic, basic knowledge you may want to know of. So basically porn. Uh, because Motec is porn for engineers. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's soft porn if you want to say it like that. Um, <laughs> and here I would like to distance from no, no, any such kind of films. That. I was about to beat your time. But then I screwed up 1 for TR. So that's actually a good sign if the engineer needs to stretch himself a little bit and stay, mis uh, stay flawless to actually beat my time, but I think I get humiliated by a second. <laughs> uh, my best time uh, on this car with this strike uh, combo is uh, 56.8. Eight, nine, I believe. Mm, good but job. With fumes right now, I'm not on fumes. <laughs> not even close. I'm close to race fuel right now. I'm not sure whether this should be calming me down or not. Um, it should, because I usually spend a lot of time with this combo, so you actually building thereabouts with me is really complementing your skill. Just like with Formula Renault that we did two, two hours ago. Oh yeah, that was an extraordinary... You basically jumped to unknown with a layout that you also don't know and finished seventh. That's nothing to be ashamed of. As this guy was unfortunately probably the last lap uh, of tonight, since uh, time's getting late, and. Uh, I think we've done some bits to the car yet, and uh, I think we can go live another time and improve it to a finish point. Exactly. 
Um, so we don't want to show everything just in an hour or, or two. Um, just like a good movie we finish with a cli uh, cliffhanger. Exactly, it's not just a cliffhanger, so uh, we, we are like a series. So if you watch certain series on TVs, there's an episode once in every week. We're not gonna do it once in every week, but maybe once in every two or three days for some time. I have some kind of episodes going for you. Uh, so I park my car into the garage, um, do the final adjustments on the name of the set and call it Setup Guide Suzuka Part 1 so I know where we need to take on next time around and then guys there's only time left to say thank you very much Devin for hosting the server in the end uh, it was fun to race Thanks, on, a, on a big railroad and also thank you very much audience for being here asking questions and everything and especially a massive thank you to uh, to Robert, who is well very <laughs> welcomed as a guest here on my stream, um, giving you those setup guide episodes in a kind of different format. And I think we're going to do that more often since I'm able to finally and focus on driving in, in depth. I'm at least I'm going to try to be as uh, informative of, as possible, so you can basically learn everything and become uh, set up masters basically that's my goal so uh yeah as i said thank you very much there uh robert for being here thank you for your help and i wish you guys uh, a good start to the week again a good start into the year 2018 hope your new year's resolutions come true and uh yeah i basically hope to see you guys back in here if you like what you see uh like share and subscribe tell your friends uh, stay tuned for latest information of give, you, give me. me a moment i'm gonna cross the line and <laughs> nah. i'm still i'm still watching you to go flawless through 130r and now break for the final chicane so a little bit if it wasn't lagging so much i would because it, in some random places i'm feeling like i've this whole the, the whole thing is so jittery so i'm just someone has gonna come up and say i'm gonna just i'm just finding excuses right now but that's the, that's the truth <laughs> something that's right on no, my end or that's that's pretty uh, much yeah. all right i can acknowledge doing a good job and doing good laps so <laughs> as he came around in a 157.6 and that means the engineer has beaten the driver at that point anyway guys on that bombshell it's time to end Thank you very much for uh, for watching. Thank you very much. Thank you, Robert, for being around. And see Thanks. you all next time around. Bye.